Hello everyone, welcome back to Where is the Music Podcast. Today I'm going to step into not too familiar area, which is uh, architecture. Um, throughout the decades I have been trying to connect uh, music with different realms, particularly different way uh, of perceptions, different levels of uh, sensitivity and of course art is where we can enhance our openness, our sensitivity, our ability to perceive things in the world um, and the architecture can possibly be uh, the farthest away from uh, music and the world that the music inhabits. Uh, this is probably also why I am so personally uh, fascinated by it. I call architecture frozen music. This is a quote uh, by Goethe uh, in I think 1839 in some uh, journal, some diary. Um, he wrote that and um, the analogies between music and architecture are many but so are the differences um, the topics uh, of today exploration uh, are uh, related to the creativity uh, as shapes in particularly geometrical shapes uh, lines, symmetries, uh, dimensions and proportions um, and colors uh, and particularly by colors I mean not just the difference between actual colors like red, blue and green but uh, things that are um, related to colors like shades, uh, dark versus light, uh, maybe uh, an idea of depth delivered by uh, a color uh, also a uh, principle of transparency that certain shades of color can uh, can add obviously the list can go much longer than this but you will um, allow me a little bit of uh, uh, freedom into exploring the world of uh, architecture uh, through the eyes of a musician in a uh, less uh, technically um, expert way so after considering uh, a musical example and today we'll be uh, looking at a fugue by Johann Sebastian Bach I will draw some possible conclusions on how such uh, creative approach uh, meaning related to shapes and colors can inspire the listener to appreciate music through al alternative modes of perceptions for example uh, through space and color uh, which are related to vision which is more appropriate to a visual field like architecture is also I will try to offer some thoughts on uh, how the artistic message of uh, the composer Bach in this case arrives to the ear of the listener more convincingly through such an aesthetic approach. So let's start the fugue that I'm gonna uh, talk about and play is the E flat minor fugue from actually from the D sharp minor fugue from the first book of Well Tempered Clavier uh, Bach Werke Versailles 853 and um, the subject goes like this as you can tell it's a very sober one it's a slow, it's in minor mode it's a uh, singable what to do with uh, a subject such as this uh, i'm not gonna enter the discussion on what a fugue is and how it is constructed there are plenty of sources available but i'd rather take a more let's say 
open experiential approach meaning let's discover together what happens as if we have never heard anything like this before so in bar three where i just stopped the subject starts again this time in a higher position space is already evoked as one enters for example in a gothic cathed cathedral one sees a geometric shape like an arch and after seeing it on one level one sees it again on a higher level same but different i'll play it again from the top After a little game between these two parts, the subject comes back in again. We can continue this analogy of, uh, let's say, exploring a cathedral, a virtual cathedral in our mind. Our eyes are looking on the other side and um, we find the same theme again, the same shape the same line again this time uh, at a lower level once again same but different Notice how these actors, as they enter in our field of vision, they literally outline the space they inhabit. One is in the middle, another one is a bit higher, and another one is lower. After this, another interplay between the um, parts, between these actors, a fourth time the same subject comes in. Now the space has uh, become four-dimensional. I'm gonna play from uh, slide before. Notice how, like in our experience of uh, entering a cathedral and exploring it visually, we let our eyes follow the main features and most characteristic aspects, possibly the structural aspects, like a column, an arch, a window, main, the main altar. But at the same time, there are a number of details that lies just behind that something that in a way connects and fills the space between the main features i want to give you an example of this musically gonna play it with the main feature joining isn't 
that interesting. So far we have encountered some uh, musical version of uh, architectonic technique and uh, I'm going to introduce some new ones. Notice that this uh, piece is four pages long, at least in my edition, and can last a good five or six minutes. So um, I'm going to extract some example here and there. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, present some of these ideas. So I was saying architectonic techniques. The first one is obviously repetition. Uh, a shape, a motif is repeated for example, in a cathedral in different locations. This adds uh, a sense of coherence, a sense that the idea underneath the whole project is, uh, is one that integrates the work entirely throughout its uh, whole dimension. In music, this is imitation. This is... Um, uh, not something that Bach has invented, of course. Imitation is a way to uh, construct a musical composition. A typical example of it comes uh, at bar 19. I'll show you what I mean. Interesting, huh? So you s you hear the same melody, just uh, like a, a different phase. Huh? So and this passage is joined by a lower part. Another architectonic technique is, of course, symmetry. A shape might transform entirely into its reversal. Typically, uh, the two sides of a cathedral are symmetrical, but this often applies to smaller and less structural details. In music, this is uh, called inversion. Uh, the example is, I think, bar 44 let's see we have this isn't that a symmetric version of uh, the initial theme becomes In this particular passage, actually, what he does is uh, inversion and imitation. Another technique is this principle of uh, transparency. Um, we can think uh, that a, a complex architecture such as a Gothic cathedral, cathedral is made of a number of layers of design. Uh, the grounds, the fundamentals, are designed to sustain the structure, which is designed to support the building, which must serve, of course, functionality, aesthetics, um, and needs to probably relate to other dimensions too. But all these layers of the design, they are not uh, transparent, of course. We are talking about actual 
matter concrete often um, but as we walk through a cathedral we realize how this design uh, intersect and function at once we walk by a column we can appreciate the motives on the wall and uh, at the same time better learn the, the distance between us and the, the very end of the church the main altar so transparency is what we see when for example we look at the drawings of a of a project of an architecture the drawings usually offer us one layer at a time i'm sure you have seen um, you have in mind multiple examples um, so the project of a building on paper is uh, design in various layers each one is its own has its own full uh, plan but in reality uh, we experience all this layer at once in music we can call it polyphony uh, in this passage the subject is uh, hidden in ornamentation and uh, you can hear the distinction between things that are structural and things that are uh, ornamental in a sense transparent So you could hear the subject somehow mingle, particularly in this in this section. So it is a principle of transparency that allows us to hear the structural and the ornamental all at once and uh, this is obvi obviously possible because music allow what we call polyphony uh, two sounds at once two melodies at once the, the next technique or architectural aspect that I want to discuss musically is this principle of proportions um, following the idea of uh, many design layers at once uh, we realize that the elements of uh, a building are balanced they have been conceived through principle obviously of proportionality each element of a uh, architecture needs to be proportionally uh, organized so larger columns for the structures smaller columns for the side rooms larger arcs matching the size of uh, the smaller ones windows and so forth in music proportions are expressed mostly in two ways one is uh, time proportions uh, a section a phrase can be longer versus shorter i mean in in time measurement minutes seconds um, here we have a magical example of perfect match between two subjects and one that is made last twice as long in music this principle is called uh, augmentation or diminution so in this case we have a subject uh, that matches uh, two subject how is that possible well uh, the one subject lasts exactly twice as long here is a subject that uh, mm, is long as usual
after that we have an inversion okay but now we have the same subject which is proportionally augmented meaning last twice as long lasting twice as long meaning it's uh, twice as slow the art is to make it all match So this is how a sense of proportionality is maintained uh, while at the same time creatively uh, change and transform the space around us. The other aspect related to proportion is a little bit, a little more subtle, I would say, and it connects with the idea of weight. I think of architecture as the art of uh, finding creative ways to trick gravity uh, but um, in architecture maybe weight is the quality of matter that uh, mostly informs design of, of building at least one of the most important qualities um, is there any ana analogy for weight in music how can sound weight differently? Um, I think of music in terms of light and heavy mm, sometimes, actually very often. And I think most of us do that in an intuitive way. There is light sounds and heavy sounds. These categories, though, uh, of course, don't relate to the actual weight of sounds because there isn't such a thing. But uh, to what we call in music the register either low or high listen to these two examples uh, the first is the opening uh, we have a slow encounter with uh, the four layers of sounds and uh, uh, almost as if we look at four different floors uh, the, the first is in the middle the last at the bottom it starts as an exploration and it finishes with grounding the whole space you can tell that at each entrance of the of the same theme a further sense of balance is reached The second example that I want to offer is um, 
uh, later on, uh, listen to how the middle high register are explored in this uh, section. Um, this is around bar 39. And at some point, though, we need to draw the eyes back down to earth. In a sense, we need that the weight of the sun will be balanced by uh, being met with uh, a lower register. So did you hear the entrance of the of the low register this one but notice for th that was needed for a long time so uh, this is the way in which i think of uh, the balance of weight that is uh, played with by a composer uh, registers are used as uh, colors in proportion that are in the end uh, supposed to give an overall sense of balance at least uh, in the past at least for uh, generally speaking the music we would call classical okay so we have uh, seen a few ways in which we could uh, effectively probably <laughs> more creatively find analogies between the world of architecture and the world of music but uh, these are all particularly looking at this few these are all uh, remarkable example of creativity but now a few questions why would this be uh, intrinsically meaningful and not just a technical exercise actually um, all that we have uh, extracted from this fugue by Bach is uh, technically, to I'm, I'm thinking of as, as a composition task, is extremely difficult to to render. Um, but why would that would such a intricate uh, way of composing would be in itself meaningful? Um, what type of message would suit best such musical world before answering let's add a couple of uh, thoughts notice how the subject of this uh, fugue the main melody stays the same uh, the composer just organizes it into a quite complex design there isn't though really any transformation of the original subject of the material it just travels through time and space and i mean the musical space we were describing earlier with the architecture analogy uh, but thinking about it bach isn't really the conductor is most the vessel the messenger counterpoint which is this uh, composition technique by that allows uh, this intricacy to be possible is not really just the style of the piece but is the is the ways the technique that allows such organization possible in a sense allows all these messages to be organized in in such a creative way but then once once again why such complex organization why does that matter it in the same way an architecture is meant for example a gothic a cathedral is meant to inspire what is there for in this case uh, to inspire wonder reflection uh, aesthetic appreciation perhaps is meant to inspire reverence for a higher design uh, maybe to inspire a moment of uh, 
contemplation. Uh, in a similar way, a piece of music uh, like this one aims at similar goal, perhaps, I'd say. Going back to the subject, it's quite sober, slow and quiet. Uh, when it ends a first time, we hear it again, like an echo, like a persuading, soothing voice that touches our senses. Imitation in different registers, like we have encountered earlier, is a way of hearing the same message from different places with different intensity. The message inhabits all levels of design. The high, the medium, the low. It is uh, reversed, it is repeated. Uh, it's pretty much like in a church, the fundamental design up to the ornamental. It's, uh, we can say, uh, it's God words uh, informing our experience. There is no drama really, but just contemplation. In this light, the artist is uh, less of a creator and more of an ambassador. He uses his uh, aesthetic sensitivity, his uh, uh, unbelievable ability of uh, using counterpoint to make uh, the message arrive through beauty to the ears of the listener. Counterpoint, once again, this complicated technique for writing in a polyphonic way is the intellectual way to reach the soul. Uh, let's remember that at the time of Bach, the sciences, mathematics, geometry, physics, and in general, all that relates with the intellect and rationality were a gift from God. Any intellectual endeavor was perfectly aligned with faith and uh, was used and promoted as a way to glorify God. But this is probably uh, material for another episode. So I'm gonna perform now a little bit of this uh, fugue in D sharp minor I recommend you to listen to uh, better versions than the one I can possibly render I am particularly fond of the Atoslav Richter's version extremely um, sober and yet uh, beautifully inspired uh, it's quite slow but uh, I recommend you take a little bit of time just to listen to that possibly attached to the previous uh, uh, to the prelude that comes just before this is uh, from well-tempered clavier book one uh, prelude and fugue number eight in uh, uh, d sharp minor uh, or e flat minor so looking forward to our next uh, episode by the way this is i suspect one of the many that will come on the same topic so if you have suggestions about the relationship between music and architecture or suggestion on relationship between music and other arts please come forward write me a message uh, i will be really uh, interested in in hearing those suggestions and those comments uh, but as i was as i was preparing for this i noticed there's so much to to talk about so many more examples to to draw i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to uh, meet you again soon here on where is the music podcast bye bye